Good day to everyone joining us, and welcome to today's VisioFarm webinar. My name is Brendan Hopkinson. I'll be your moderator for this lecture. Today we have one of our experts in digital pathology. Janita Omanovic is our clinical development engineer and data lead. She has been here at VisioFarm for five years and helps develop our CEIVD apps in data sourcing and data management. She specializes in external projects and collaborations within the clinical realm, and today she will be discussing standardization in clinical digital pathology using a KI67 case. I'm excited to get started, so it is my pleasure to welcome Janita Omanovic, and I'll let you take it from here. So please begin whenever you're ready. Thank you for the introduction, Brandon, and hello to everyone joining in on this webinar. So today's topic is standardization using clinical digital pathology, which is a topic very close at heart to us here in Visual Farm. There are many areas where digital pathology can offer standardization, but we will be zooming in on the infamous KI67 case for breast cancer. So for today's talk, we will look into the biomarker KI67 and the issues surrounding the use of KI67 in clinical practice. Then we will talk a bit about different approaches to digital pathology, and we will showcase the CEIVD marked algorithms we have developed for KI67. We will look at the scientific validity behind these algorithms, and finally, we will also look at what AI and deep learning developments we have. Before we dive into the KS67 case, I just want to start off by giving you a short introduction to VisioFarm and our mission. So we're obviously a company that focuses on digital pathology, and our goal is simply to give pathologists and researchers around the world the best and latest technology so that they can get the most out of their tissue data. Now, obtaining tissue data is a somewhat cumbersome process as partly illustrated on this slide. There's a lot of steps that needs to be conducted, for example, excisioning, fixation, sectioning, staining, assessment, and so on. So when you combine the facts that today's laboratory workflows are still rather manual, we have an increase in cancer cases and a demand for more pathologists, you see that the pathology laboratory face several limitations. And some of these limitations could end up causing an accumulation of assessment errors. And this is where digital image analysis comes into play. So what we believe is that with digital imaging analysis, we're able to alleviate some of the limits experienced in the pathology laboratories. We can do complex data analysis, ensure optimal digital workflows, and maybe most importantly, provide standardized, validated, and precise data and results. And that's exactly what we will be focusing on today. So let's turn our attention to the KS67 case, and in particular within breast cancer. So KS67 is a nuclear proliferation biomarker, and it has multiple potential roles in different cancers, both as a prognostic but also a predictive marker. But there are some controversies surrounding KS67. When we are talking about KS67, we have this one figure we always like to show. The figure is from a study conducted by Rasmus Rui and colleagues from Nordic QC back in 2013. They wanted to examine how different pathology laboratories score K67 stained tissues. For this study, they created a tissue microarray with 20 breast tumor cores that had a varied K67 expression. The TMA slide was stained with K67 scanned and sent for assessment at 126 pathologists. The figure here shows the manually assessed K67 proliferation index for each of the 20 tumor cores on the TMA slide. What we see is that there is a huge variability in the reported results. So we see that scores can even range from negative to highly positive. Look at core 10, for example. Some say the proliferation index is just above zero, while others report a proliferation index as high as 50 and something. What this shows is that a patient might be assessed as one thing in one hospital, but another thing in another hospital. This can naturally and unfortunately have an effect on the patient management. Now you might say, well, this study is from 2013. It's many years ago now. Surely things have changed. 
But when you look at more recent literature on KI-67, you will see that the number one issue still addressed is the inter and intra variability when assessing KI-67. Here I just showed a few example articles from 2017 up till today. And as you can see, all of them were touching upon the inter and intra observer variability that you observe with KI-67. Now, one question we asked ourselves when we first realized how difficult it is to assess the KS67 proliferation index was if image analysis could be a way forward to obtain a standardized and reproducible method for KS67 assessment. We were so lucky that we got our hands on the TMA course from the study conducted by Reismus Röhe and colleagues, and we could therefore analyze the tumor course with our KS67 algorithm. To the left, you can see the original manual assessments, and then we have plotted the image analysis results as a green dot on top of the box plots. On the figure to the right, we have plotted the median manual scores and the image analysis results. And interestingly, we see a very high correlation between these two variables, and thus also a potential for image analysis to be used as a standardized method for KI-67 assessment, and also a way to overcome the controversy around the inter and intra variability. But the story doesn't end there. Another controversy around KI-67 is what scoring method to use. For several years, it has been discussed whether global scoring or hotspot scoring is the way forward. And as of today, a recommendation for what scoring method to use is lacking in international guidelines, and thus different countries have different national guidelines. Some recommend hotspots, some don't. As we will see later, we have developed image analysis tools that can both accommodate global k 67 scoring, but also hotspot scoring. Before we move to looking at the image analysis tools we have, I would like to spend just a few minutes on the evolution in approaches to digital pathology. So digital pathology is still a relatively young field, but nonetheless, a lot has happened. And especially the introduction of AI and deep learning in digital pathology has really, as in many other fields, been a game changer. We have been in the business for quite many years, and we have looked back to the early start of digital pathology and up until now, and we have been able to identify three principal approaches to digital pathologies. We can also say three workflow paradigms. So the first and most basic of the workflows is depicted on this slide. The workflow basically consists of three steps. First, the pathologist needs to annotate the relevant regions to be analyzed, then an algorithm is run within this region, and finally, the pathologist can review the result. As you might have guessed, annotation of regions is a very time-consuming task and can also be quite a subjective task where different pathologists end up annotating different regions. So with this workflow, we don't exactly end up with a fully standardized and reproducible approach. Now, in the second workflow, the image analysis is run on the whole slide and the pathologist afterwards confines the results to the relevant regions and makes, you can say, the image analysis fit the purpose. So again, quite a lot of manual interaction is necessary. And this is, for example, to ensure that stromal cells are not counted. This costs time and might also lack uh, in reproducibility and standardization. So in the third workflow, it's all about automation. In this workflow, we are automatically identifying the relevant regions to assess. We run the image analysis in these regions, and all the pathologist needs to do is QC the result and sign off on the case. So in this workflow, we are saving the pathologist time, and we are providing a standardized and reproducible test result. These three workflows that I have shown are all available on the market today. But we see a shift in that more and more people are out for a more automated workflow like the one shown here. In our opinion, this is also the workflow that is of most value. And this is why we have for many years been focusing on how we can automate the assessment process as much as possible. And this leads us to our next slide. So here we have shown the full panel of KI67 solutions that we offer for breast cancer. 
We will start by going through the solutions shown in blue. These are all CE marked for in vitro diagnostics use in Europe. As you can see, the full workflow is stepwise and requires some tumor detection, biomarker quantification, and finally hotspot detection if desired. Each solution works on its own, but they can also be combined to get a fully automated KI-67 assessment. So if we look at the first step towards automation, you will see that we offer two solutions for tumor detection. The PZK tumor detection provides a general tumor outline, whereas the invasive tumor detection solution specifically detects invasive tumor. Both of these applications use a virtual double staining method where an accurate tumor outline is obtained based on the information in a serial tissue section that has been stained with a tumor marker. After having detected a relevant tumor, you can use our KS67 app to quantify positive and negative cells within the tumor regions. Finally, if desired, you can use our hotspot app to find the hotspot in your samples. So that's the solutions we offer for diagnostic purposes. Now on the research side of things, we offer an AI and deep learning based approach. So here we have a tumor detection application that consists of a pre-trained deep neural network that detects tumor based on tissue morphology. The method does not require any additional tissue section, but detects tumor straight in your biomarker slide and is therefore easy to apply. Then we also have a KS67 solution based on AI. This one can then go in and find positive and negative nuclei, and you can combine all of this with a hotspot app as well. So what I want to show you is how our invasive tumor detection combined with the KS67 app and combined with the hotspot app gives a fully automated KS67 assessment. So what we need to be able to conduct such an analysis is that we need to have some breast cancer tissue stained for KS67. This is what we see here. But then we also need to have a serial uh, section that has been stained with P63 and a cytokeratin. So what the P63 and cytokeratin stained uh, section allows us to do is that we can go in and pinpoint what is invasive tumor and what is non-invasive. And this we can do based on the P63 positive myoepithelial cells that we see in some structures. We can then run our invasive tumor detection app on this image and we get the following result. So here we have outlined the invasive tumors in blue and the non-invasive ones in orange. Because this section is serial to a K67 section, we can easily transpose these regions onto a K67 slide. The next thing we then can do is that we can go in and assess how many K67 positive and negative nuclei we have present. For this, we use our K67 app. So here you can see how our app very nicely outlines both the negative and the positive nuclei within the invasive tumor only. If we look at the results in the top left corner, we can see that on this tissue slide, we actually analyze a total of 175,120 nuclei. And I think that would have been very difficult to do manually, but this is something we can easily do with image analysis. We can also see that the proliferation index, uh, the global proliferation index for this slide is 1.9%. Now, apart from just doing a global k 60 scoring, we can also do a hotspot k 67 scoring. Um, to do a hotspot KS67 scoring, we use our hotspot app that firstly goes in and creates a heat map that shows us where the highest concentration of positive KS67 cells are. We can see that we have some action in the bottom right corner and in the top left corner. Based on this, we can then place a hotspot. So here we have decided to place a hotspot that fits with a 20x microscope field of view. But since there is no consensus on how a hotspot should look like, we have developed the app so that you can create the hotspot definition you find most appropriate.
If we look at the results, we see that the hotspot has a proliferation index of 5.3%, whereas the global score was of 1.9%. Now, our applications have been on the market for quite some time, and for us to see among them for in vitro diagnostic use in Europe, we of course had to do a lot of uh, validation tests to show that they can actually perform adequately. Since they have been on the market for some years, it also means that several hospitals are using them, and we also have some people that have actually published articles based on what they have found using uh, our Care 67 app. So I would like to go back to the slideshow and uh, show you a bit of scientific validity when it comes to the KS67 application. So here we have an article by Stuhlhammer and colleagues that was published in Modern Pathology back in 2016. Uh, and in the article, they describe a study where they used uh, primary breast cancer specimens and had a total of 436 samples. They also had 28 years of survival data. And then they scored all of these samples for KS67, ER, PR, and HER2. And the scoring was conducted manually and also by digital image analysis by using the solutions that we provide. So the manual and digital image analysis results were compared for sensitivity and specificity for luminal B subtype, for concordance to PAM50 assays, and for prognostic power. And in the article, they conclude that the VisioFarm digital image analysis uh, that they evaluated was in most aspects a superior alternative to manual biomarker scoring. They also say that it has the potential to reduce time consumption for pathologists as many of the steps in the workflow are either automatic or feasible to manage without pathological expertise. Another article published by the group examined the value of digital image analysis for KS67, including hotspot analysis with the manual assessment against PAM50 gene expression. In this article and in the study, they had almost 300 patients uh, with up to 15 years of survival data. And what they concluded is that image analysis of KI67 was superior to manual KI67 and PHH3 evaluations, as well as to mitotic counts in terms of separation of patients with poor versus relatively good survival. And they also say that digital image analysis of KS67 in hotspots is the marker of choice for routine analysis of proliferation in breast cancer. And a third article that I want to highlight, uh, which is uh, conducted by another group, uh, it's by Koopman and colleagues. Uh, here they used serial whole tissue sections of 154 invasive breast carcinomas that were stained with KS67 and CK8 and 18. What they did was that they manually assessed the KS67 proliferation index and then they also used two uh, different digital image analysis platforms where one of the platforms is our BIS platform. And they conclude that digital image analysis using virtual double staining is an accurate method to determine the KS67 proliferation index in breast cancer uh, as an alternative to manual scoring of whole tissue sections in clinical practice. So I think that these articles uh, very nicely show that using our KS67 workflows really can help you standardize your KS67 assessment in the laboratory. Here in the end, I want to show you how our research use KS67 AI-based applications work. So here we have the same image that I showed before, but only now I only have the KS67 stained section and not a P63 and tumor stained section. And this is because when we use our AI-based tumor detection application, we can detect the tumor straight in the biomarker slide and we don't need an extra serial section. So this is the result of our AI tumor detection application. You can see that it very neatly outlines all the tumor that's present on this slide. 
What we can do from here is that we can run our AI-based KS67 app. What I would like you to notice here is how the AI-based KS67 app is better at mimicking the true shape of a nuclei. This is because our AI app has learned what a nuclei looks like and it can apply this knowledge onto this tissue piece as well. So with AI detection, you can say that we get a more precise detection of both the tumor contours, but also of what is a nuclei and what is not. Since we also have a researchers only version of our hotspot app, we can actually also do hotspot detection on this uh, image. So this was all I have planned for this session, and I hope that you got a good overview of how digital pathology can help you automate and standardize your assessments so that you can get precise and validated test results in the clinic. Thank you very much. So I'd like to thank Junita one more time for her excellent presentation, and I've enjoyed being your moderator for this lecture. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask us at webinars at visiofarm.com. If you're interested in more in digital pathology, please feel free to visit VisioPharm's booth in the virtual exhibition hall. Thanks again for joining us and have a great day.